Well, the Chohan of the our, or Lord of the seven rays of God's consciousness, <clears throat> they want to sponsor us on our spiritual journey and our healing. But because of free will, we must invite the Ascended Masters into our lives. You have attended the one or both of the two preceding presentations. And for some, today is your first presentation. So I will introduce some of the introductory teachings. Again, the two previous presentations will be available as replays. These teachings come from the Ascended Masters through their anointed messengers, Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. The messenger's calling was to deliver the spiritual teachings of heavenly beings called dictations for our soul's awakening and a path by where we could find our way back to God. While receiving these dictations, they were in a fully conscious, exalted state. The Ascended Masters are our elder brothers and sisters on the spiritual path. They walked the earth, balanced their karma, mastered the circumstances of their lives, and ascended back to God. They work with earnest seekers in the forward spiritual evolution. Even as they teach mankind, they were and are students of other Ascended Masters who are above them in heavenly hierarchy. The path of discipleship continues in the heaven world as is the model for the student-teacher-master-disciple relationship on earth. This chart on the slide is known as a chart of our divine self. And understanding our spiritual anatomy helps us on our spiritual journey. We see three figures on this chart, an upper, a middle, and a lower figure. The colored spheres of the causal body contain the records of all of our virtuous acts from our many incarnations. It is our cosmic bank account in heaven, and each color of the rings of the causal body relates to one of the seven rays of God's consciousness. Our positive use of each of our chakras is recorded in the corresponding colored rings of the causal body. The middle figure of the chart is our higher self or our holy Christ self. This might be the holy Buddha self if one came from the Buddhist tradition. This is our inner teacher, the mediator between the imperfect soul and the perfection of the mighty I am presence. The holy Christ self is the voice that speaks within our heart. The voice of conscience that tells us right from wrong, giving guidance. When we do not listen to the Holy Christ Self, the Holy Christ Self moves farther away from us. And when we follow the guidance of the Holy Christ Self, it moves closer to us. The lower figure in the chart represents the evolving soul, us on planet Earth. The violet flame depicted in the chart around the evolving soul is a high frequency energy of transmutation, which is invoked through visualizations and mantras called decrees. Around the vital flame is a protective white light known as a tube of light. This tube of light is nine feet in diameter. It's a cylinder and it comes from our mighty I am presence, which is within the center of the upper figure that we saw on the chart, which is our individualized God presence. And it goes beneath our feet. The tube of light decree is an example of a violet flame decree and the science of the spoken word. It's used to invoke a protective sealing of our auras. And we'll give this decree together three times with an audio recording of Elizabeth 
declare profit giving it. And while we give it, we can visualize that white cylinder of light nine feet in diameter around us coming from our mighty I am presence and the violet flame inside of that cylinder. The shaft of light that we see coming into the crown chakra comes from that mighty I am presence to through the Holy Christ self to the lower figure in the chart. And it's called the crystal cord. It's our lifeline that ties us to spirit. Some find it difficult to visualize. And we just keep working on it. And as we get more mastery of the third eye chakra, it becomes easier. So here we go. Feel free to join. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire. Keep being gone in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name. So I am one with violet flame. Beloved, I am presence bright. Round me seal your tube of light. From ascended master flame, called forth now in God's own name. Let it keep my temple free from all discord sent to me. I am calling forth violet fire to blaze and transmute all desire, keeping on in freedom's name till I am one with a violet flame. So we've learned that we have three higher bodies, the mighty I am presence in the center of the causal body, the causal body, and the higher self or the holy Christ self. We also have four lower bodies or energy fields, the physical, which is the most dense of these four lower bodies, then the emotional, the mental, and the etheric, or the memory body. We've had many lifetimes of thoughts, feelings, and actions that are recorded in our energy field. The science of the spoken word can change or transmute any negative patterns that have lodged in our four lower bodies and heal our souls. A portion of our karmic deck to life arrives daily at dawn. If we do not transmute that karma through invoking light by using the science of the spoken word, by its weight, it will descend from the etheric body, eventually depositing that energy in our physical bodies. In our last presentation, we focused on healing our chakras with violet flame and violet flame decrees. Today, we'll learn about healing our soul as well. The soul's dwelling place is in the seat of the soul chakra, which you see here as the second one up from the base of the chakra. This is an image of the seat of the soul chakra. It is violet and it has six petals. It's a chakra between this base of the spine and the solar plexus chakra. And the goal of our soul is to permanently unite with the higher self or the Holy Christ self and the Mayayam present. So our soul's natural place of, is in the seat of the soul chakra and it has an upward climb to unite in the heart with the Holy Christ self, which we will be learning about in the next few slides. The ascension is the integration of the soul with the three levels of higher consciousness. And we master ourselves through balancing our karma, learning the lessons of our karma, so that we're not vulnerable to re-energizing the human ego-centered patterns of consciousness. Karma can be blinding, and it's the energy patterns that we have lived with for many embodiments and may have become comfortable with. This is a depiction of the soul. Our soul descended from spirit into earthly planes 
and loss of memory of their origin. The Ascended Masters refer to the soul as the feminine potential of the masculine aspect of Father in the Mighty I Am Presence. The Mighty I Am Presence is the individualized presence of God for each of us. It's the awakening soul that responds to the call to begin the ascent back to God. We can lead our souls to restore her heavenly patterns and the ascension. When we have earned our ascension, we do not have to be in body on earth. But the soul must meet several conditions in order to ascend. The three primary ones are balancing the threefold flame, which we'll be learning about, fulfilling her mission on earth according to her divine plan, and balancing at least 51% of her karma. This is an image of the secret chamber of the heart chakra, and it has eight petals. It's peach in color, and it is behind and to the left of the heart chakra, which is in the center of our chest. The flame we see here is called the threefold flame because three primary attributes of spirit, power, wisdom, and love. This threefold flame is a spark that God has transmitted from his heart to ours. It's about one sixteenth of an inch high. The soul is called by God to climb that staircase of testing from the seat of the soul chakra up the spinal altar to the secret chamber of the heart where she meets her holy Christ self in the threefold flame. The blue plume on our left embodies God's power and corresponds to the first ray in the throat chakra. The little plume in the center embodies God's wisdom and corresponds to the second ray in the crown chakra. The pink plume on our right embodies God's love and corresponds to the Holy Spirit, the third ray in the heart chakra. We're called to balance and expand these three plumes as Jesus did through our God-ordained use of light. Jesus' threefold flame enveloped his entire form. Before our departure from innocence, the crystal cord was nine feet in diameter, and the threefold flame enveloped our form. Our source of energy was unlimited, and the Christ consciousness was all unfolding. After our fall, our opportunity to exercise free will was curtailed. By cosmic edict, the threefold flame was reduced to one sixteenth of an inch in height. So we can call to the Chohans of the rays to help us heal our souls and expand and balance our threefold flame. We're going to hear a seven minute video excerpt of Elizabeth Clare Prophet teaching about the soul. The concept of the evolution of the soul must be central to our path. We have been evolving for millions of years. The soul has been evolving as long as we have been in the matter cosmos. Let us, con let us consider today what soul evolution is really all about. The term soul is popular. It's a popular topic today. People talk about and write about the soul. They know that the soul is important, but few people know how to care for the soul, how to care for the soul, their own soul, or even what the soul is. Have you ever thought that perhaps you had completely silenced your own soul, that you have no rapport whatsoever to this or with this presence that is within you. If that has taken place and we have simply walled off the soul, we are at a standstill in our evolution, our spiritual evolution. 
Yes, the soul is the mortal part of ourselves, the part that can become immortal. To achieve this, she must be fused or bonded to her higher self or her holy Christ self. Most people think that their soul is immortal. I've mentioned this before, but we need to remember it, that most people confuse one's soul with one's spirit. Just as we lost our immortality, so the soul lost her immortality. And so our soul is impermanent until she is bonded to her Christ self. And until she is bonded, she can be lost. So we can lose our souls by the mistreatment of the soul or simply by wicked deeds. If we want to, we can think about the soul as a glistening, transparent sphere that is constantly evolving or devolving. We have free will, and to a certain extent, the soul has free will, yet we govern our own souls. Our souls are wise. Our souls know the future and they know the past. They see into the distance and they see into the immediacy of the moment. The soul is highly sensitive and sensitized. But she is also innocent and in a sense defenseless. She is vulnerable to astral forces. She is impressionable and easily led astray. She is often colored by her environment. She can be influenced by discordant music or violent movies or a toxic environment and wounded by physical or emotional or verbal abuse. We are the parents of our soul, and every day, speaking on behalf of Alpha and Omega, if we are able, we must impress upon the soul what is real and of enduring worth, and what is not real, and therefore what we must rid ourselves of, because it is not of worth. We do this not only through our prayers and decrees, but also through the kind of care and the kind of environment we provide for our soul. We can neglect the soul as we might neglect a child, or we can care lovingly for the soul as we would care for a child. Proverbs is speaking of the soul when it says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The ascended masters did not intend us to be led around by every whim of our souls, even as they do not intend us to respond to every whim of our children. Since the soul is our child, we must love and protect, care for, teach and instruct, and also discipline. The soul requires training, and she requires parenting. The Ascended Masters have referred to the soul as the child that lives inside of us. A part of us is the perpetual child, and when that child is healthy, healthy and free, and not burdened, it can be a delight to be with such a person. But if the soul is ill, disturbed, out of alignment with her God, and has a schism between herself and the parent self, then we find that people are not happy with themselves. They are not happy because they have not created the peace that the soul needs and the peace that they need and the logical fusion of both. 
Our soul is the little child who is destined to become the Christ child. If our soul is to reach that level, we must lead her to that place. As parents and caretakers, we are responsible not only for the protection and education of our children, but for the care and molding of their souls as well. The Chohans, or Lords of the Rays, are our mentors of the spirit, and we can apply to them to become their students. This slide is of eight Chohans and the corresponding chakras of the ray that they are the Chohan of. Each Chohan has demonstrated mastery on their ray throughout numerous incarnations, and they have taken initiations or tests both before and after their ascension. The candidate is appointed to the office of Chohan by the Maha Chohan, or the Great Lord. When we call to them to help us purify the chakra and the corresponding God qualities and organs of their rays, they will do so. We're going to look at some of the past lives of the Chohans. And the ray that they represent and the organs and the consciousness, the qualities and the perversions of the consciousness of each of those rays. So we might take note as we're going through these of what chakra we might want to work on and therefore what chohan we would call to to help us with the pure faith vacation of chakra. The Maha Chohan the office and hierarchy of the Holy Spirit and the great Lord or director of the seven Chohans of the race. Among the qualifications of this office is his hierarchy is his attainment of adipship on each of the seven rays. The one who currently holds the office of Maha Chohan was embodied as a blind poet Homer who wrote the epic poems set Iliad and the Odyssey. Historically, little is known about Homer, but most scholars believe that he composed his poems in the 8th or 9th century BC. In his final embodiment as a shepherd in India, the light that he quietly drew forth supported millions. He gained his mastery by concentrating himself as a chalice for divine emanations. At the moment of birth, he breathes the breath of life into our bodies to ignite the threefold flame that is lowered into manifestation in the secret chamber of the heart. The Mahachohan also attends us at the transition called death when he comes to withdraw the flame of life. The flame or divine spark returns to the Holy Christ self and the soul also returns to the level of the Holy Christ self. Similarly, he will minister to us at every crossroads in life if we look to him and call, Come, Holy Spirit, enlighten me. El Moria is a chief of the Darjeeling Council of the Great White Brotherhood. The Great White Brother is a body of ascended masters, angels, and heavenly beings. White refers not to race, but to the purity of their auras. He's also the Chohan of the First Ray. He's the founder of the Summit Lighthouse and guru of the messengers, Mark and Elizabeth Clare Prophet. El Moria was embodied as Abraham around 2100 BC, the first Hebrew patriarch. He returned as Melchior, one of the three wise men. As King David around the 5th century AD, he guarded the inner teachings as the guru of the mystery school at Camelot. In his final embodiment, El Moria was born a prince in India and later became a monk frequently at the retreats of the Himalayas.
as a master M together with two other ascended masters known as Master K.H. Kathumi and Dwakul, they founded this Theosophical Society to acquaint mankind with cosmic law and hierarchy through the writings of Madame Blavatsky. Amori ascended in, in 1898 and continues his work for God government on earth through his embodied chimas. Chila is another word for disciple. El Moria told us that beginning in 1998, El Moria, Thumi, and Dua who were embodied as the three wise men, would help us balance karma and teach us the keys to the path of the ascension. El Moria, Kuthumi, and Dua represent the three plumes of the threefold flame in our hearts. El Moria, the blue plume, Kuthumi, the yellow plume, and Dua the pink plume. It will help us to bring our threefold flame into resonance with theirs. So this slide shows us some of the positive expressions of the throat chakra, strength, will, faith, protection, courage, and obedience, and some of the unbalanced expressions which create karma in that chakra. It should be actually lack of control. Oh, control, probably. Control in this sense would mean controlling others. Condemnation, idle chatter, gossip, human willfulness, impotence, cowardice, and doubt. And the body parts that resonate with the, three, with the throat chakra are the thyroid, the lungs, and the respiratory system. Lord Lanto is a Chohan of the second ray, which teaches dominion of the crown chakra. He was a high priest in the temple of the Divine Mother on the continent that sank beneath the Pacific, known as Lemuria. Lanto indeed in ancient China as the Duke of Chao around 1100 BC and was regarded as one of the greatest statesmen in Chinese history. The Duke of Chao wrote manuals on governmental organization, ritual, and propriety. The most famous book by the Duke of Chao is a Yellow Emperor's Guide, classic, excuse me, Yellow Emperor's Classic of Eternal Medicine, the oldest known book on medicine. Lanto was later embodied as a ruler of China at the time of Confucius around 551 to 479 BC. Together with his contemporaries, Confucius and Gautama, he held the golden flame of illumination on behalf of the Chinese people for many centuries. Before his ascension, Lord Lanto manifested the light from his to be physically seen, emanating as a soft golden glow through his chest. So we can call to Lord Lanto to help us gain a sense of our true worth. And these are some of the positive expressions of the crown chakra. Illumination, wisdom, self-knowledge, self as the lower self, and self as the higher self. Understanding, humility, cosmic consciousness, open-mindedness, unbalanced expression to the crown chakra, which we would make karma in that chakra if we fall into some of these patterns of intellectual and spiritual pride, vanity, intellectualism, ego-centeredness, narrow-mindedness, ignorance, and body parts that are associated with the crown chakra, the pineal, pituitary, cerebral cortex, and the nervous system. Paul of Nietzsche is the Chohan of the third of divine love. In the days of Atlantis, Paul served in the government as a head of cultural affairs. He embodied in the Inca Empire as an artist who used paints that did not fade, a mastery that he brought back in his final embodiment. He embodied in Egypt as a master of esoteric architecture, 
and worked closely with El Moria at the time of building the Great Pyramids. During his final embodiment as Paul Veronese, he discovered a technique of pigment preparation that was unsurpassed in preserving paint. His magnificent colors still radiate brilliantly today. On one occasion, he was summoned before the tribunal of the Inquisition under sponsorship of, excuse me, under suspicion of heresy for the irreverences in his paintings of the Last Supper, which included a dwarf, a parrot, guards in German armor, dogs, and a jester. Veronese staunchly defended the artist's right to freedom of expression and imagination. The tribunal found a solution by suggesting that the painting be renamed Feast in the House of Levi. Paul made his ascension in 1588. The Ascended Master Paul the Venetian is a great teacher on the path of love. His devotion to beauty, the perfection of the soul, to compassion, patience, understanding, self-discipline, and the development of the intuition and creative faculties of the heart. He can train us in the gift of the discerning between good and evil. We can pray to Paul the Venetian to assist us in developing our heart chakra and the threefold flame and to manifest the Christ consciousness in our lives. Positive expressions of the heart chakra, love, compassion, beauty, selflessness, sensitivity, appreciation, comfort, creativity, charity, and generosity. Unbalanced expression, hatred, dislike, selfishness, self-pity, human sympathy, negligence. Parts of the body associated with the heart chakra, the heart, the thymus, and the circulatory system. Therapis Bay is a chohan of the fourth ray of the ascension flame. The white light of the base of the spine chakra. This white light is also known as the mother light. Out of this white light comes architecture, mathematics, the foundations of the building of the pyramid of self. Known as a great disciplinarian, Saravis Bay was a priest in the Ascension Temple of Atlantis. As guardian of the Ascension Flame, he carried the flame safely up the Nile River to Luxor just before Atlantis sank. Saravis Bay gives us a glimpse of this experience. Quote, I remember when the first rumblings of the sinking of Atlantis were present. The sinking of that continent came in stages. The warning allowed many to escape. We made our way to Luxor. You may wonder why a spiritual flame requires transporting by mere mortals. The children of the light tend to think that such things ought to happen miraculously. A touch of the fairy tale has spilled into religion, and people have forgot that all that has been wrought by God and man has been the joint effort. Serapis was the architect of the Great Pyramid, and El Moria was a master mason. The Great Pyramid is in the etheric octave and is not the Pyramid of Giza due to the misuse of its energy by black magicians, false gurus, and false shivas or disciples. Serapis also embodied as the Spartan King Leonidas about 480 BC is when he passed in that life. And the sculptor Phidias during the 5th century BC in Athens the architect of the Parthenon. And as far back as we know, Serapis Bay ascended, excuse me, as far as we know, he ascended about 400 BC. Serapis Bay played a vital role in a theosophical society. Serapis took personal charge of the amanuensis, or secretary, Elena Blavatsky, and of Colonel Henry Steele Alcott who was the co-founder and the president of the Theosophical Society. We can call to Sarabas Bay to help us purify the base of the spine chakra, to heal the organs associated with it, and to help us discipline our four little bodies. Positive qualities of this chakra, purity, hope, joy, self-discipline, integration, perfection, 
wholeness, nurturing, unbalanced expressions by which we would make karma for that chakra, discouragement, hopelessness, impurity, chaos. Part of the body associated with the base of the spine chakra are the adrenals and the reproductive organs. Arian is one of the fifth ray of healing and truth. He was a high priest in the Temple of Truth on Atlantis, and he transported the flame of truth to Greece a short time before the sinking of the continent. The focus of truth that he established became the focal point for the oracles of Delphi, messengers of truth who served for hundreds of years until black priests penetrated the Delphic order and perverted truth. Hilarion embodied as Saul of Tarsus, who became the Apostle Paul. Because he had consented to the stoning of St. Stephen, the first Christian martyr, and had actively persecuted and killed Christians, he did not ascend at the conclusion of that life. The taking of life in one incarnation often requires another embodiment to balance that karma. Jesus sponsored him in his final incarnation as St. Hilarion, about 290 A.D. Hilarion spent 20 years in the desert in preparation for his first miracle. He cured a woman of barrenness. And from that day forward, he carried out a healing ministry. Crowds would gather to be healed of diseases and unclean spirits. They followed him even into the most desolate places. He tried many times to hide, but they always found him, compelling him to follow his true calling. Though I, quote, though I would retreat, they would follow. And so the Lord told me that the gift of truth and of healing is only for the sharing, only for the giving away. Hilarion had the gift of healing in great abundance. The truly great healers of mankind who can bring souls to the point of resolution and wholeness by a touch of the hand or a simple command are sent from God. The identifying mark of the true healer is that he's humble before God and man and gives all glory to God, knowing that he is but the instrument. We can call to Hilarion to help us purify our third eye chakra for the healing of our four little bodies and to help us discern truth. Positive expressions of the third eye chakra. Truth, vision, holding the highest vision of ourselves and for others. Healing, wholeness, abundance, constancy, focus, music, science. Unbalanced expression of the third eye chakra. Falsehood, lack of vision, criticism, lack of clarity, inconstancy, spiritual impoverishment, and parts of the body that are associated with the third eye chakra pineal, pituitary, and portion to the brain. Lady Master Nada, the Chohan of the Sixth Ray, associated with the solar plexus chakra. The God qualities of peace, ministration, and service. On Atlantis, Nada worked in the healing arts and served as a priestess in the Temple of Love. She was always embodied as a lawyer. Excuse me, she was also embodied as a lawyer on Atlantis where she championed the cause of divine justice for the downtrodden and oppressed. In her final incarnation 2,700 years ago, Nada was the youngest of a family of gifted children. She was tutored by the archangels of the third ray in how to expand the threefold flame of love for the quickening of the chakras of her brothers and sisters. She chose to forego pursuing her own career and instead kept the flame in deep meditation and prayer for her brothers and sisters in their various fields of endeavor. It does not matter what our training and what our position. It is not what we do with our hands. It is what we do with our hearts that counts. Quote, For as I spent several of my last incarnations in keeping the flame of life anonymously for my family and for other members of the community, so I'm able to tell you what it means to God what it means to soul evolving on Terra, to have someone silently declaring the law of truth, perfection, and victory on behalf of each one 
was busy serving, trying to do good for humanity, that he does not have time to make the application for himself. End of quote. We can call to Nada to help us develop the sensitivity of the heart. She ministers to the world's children with legions of angels who personally tend to the needs of the youth. Positive expressions of this chakra, the solar plexus chakra, peace, brotherhood, selfless service, right desire, balance, harmlessness, unbalanced expressions of the solar plexus chakra, anger, agitation, fanaticism, aggression, egoism, overindulgence, fear, anxiety, passivity, parts of the body associated with the solar plexus chakra, the digestive system, liver, and pancreas. St. Germain, Chohan of the Seventh Ray, and Hierarch of the Quarian Age. 50,000 years ago, St. Germain was a ruler of a golden age where the Sahara Desert now is. And he was king emperor, and his empire reached a height of perfection unexceeded in the physical. The people the people became more interested in the pleasures of the senses than in their god self. A cosmic council instructed the ruler to withdraw. The people's karma would be their teacher. As high priest of the Violet Flame Temple in Atlantis 13,000 years ago, St. Germain sustained a fountain of violet flame, which magnetized people from near and far who came to be set free from conditions of the body, mind, and soul. St. Germain was embodied as the prophet Samuel, St. Joseph, the father of Jesus, as Merlin, the counselor of the court of King Arthur, as Christopher Columbus, the discoverer of America, and as Francis Bacon. After his ascension, desiring to liberate God's people, St. Germain sought and was granted a dispensation from the lords of karma to return to earth in a physical body he appeared as a Lacan de Saint-Germain who dazzled the courts of 18th and 19th century Europe. In his final attempt to unite Europe, he backed Napoleon, who misused the master's power to his own demise. Saint Germain turned his attention to the New World. He became the sponsoring master of the USA, his, the first president, the Declaration of Independence and Constitution. He also inspired many labor savoring saving devices to further liberate mankind from drudgery that they might devote themselves to the pursuit of God. In 1961, St. Germain contacted his representative, Mark Prophet, and founded the Keepers of the Fame Fraternity to restore the memory of the ancient vow for light bearers to reconsecrate their lives to the freedom of the souls of God's people. In 1954, St. Germain received the authority to direct the consciousness of mankind for this 2,000-year period. As this dawn of the age of Aquarius, St. Germain has gone before the Lords of Karma and received the opportunity to release the knowledge of the violet flame outside of the mystery schools. We can call to St. Germain to help us transmute ego-centered patterns of our soul. Positive expressions of the seat of the soul chakra. Freedom, mercy, forgiveness, justice, transcendence, alchemy, transmutation, diplomacy, intuition, privacy, revelation. Unbalanced expressions, lack of forgiveness, justice or mercy, intolerance, lack of tact, disregard for others, cruelty. Parts of the body associated with the seat of the soul chakra the organs and systems of elimination and reproduction. So we can call to the Chohan to the rays to help us heal our souls, our bodies, purify our chakras and balance and expand our threefold flames. The center masters have instructed us to use the science of the spoken word to manifest our healing. They have taught us when we meditate, we commune with God. When we pray, we communicate with God. When we decree, we're commanding God's light to enter our world for personal and world transformation. For 
prayer, meditation, and decrees all are ways of assessing the power of spirit. And there's a time and a place to practice each type of devotion. The Ascender Masters teach, though, that decrees are the most powerful form of invoking God's light for our healing. So we're going to practice a sign to the spoken word with a body flame decree. We're going to give this is known as a preamble. It's like the address on an envelope of who, what master or what level we are directing our request to. We'll say this together. In the name of the beloved, mighty, victorious presence of God, I am in me, my very own beloved Holy Christ self, beloved Guru Ma and Anello, the entire spirit of the great white brotherhood and the world mother. Pardon me, I didn't say that. I decree. So who is Guru Ma and who is Anello? Guru Ma is the ascended name uh, that we use to call upon Elizabeth Kerr Prophet, who is now in the ascended state, and Anello is the ascended name of Mark Prophet. The next slide, we're going to have a decree that we can give. It's known as the law of forgiveness. We invoke the violet flame through the word as well as through our visualization. So we can visualize this violet fire around us. These are the color of the chakras at their most purified, highest frequency. We go through this one time using violet fire, and then we repeat it using mercy's flame, and then repeat it again using purple flame. I'm going to give it together now. Violet fire enfold us. Violet fire enfold us. Violet fire enfold us. Violet fire hold us. Violet fire hold us. Violet fire hold us. Violet fire set us free. Violet fire set us free. Violet fire set us free. I am, I am, I am surrounded by a pillar of violet flame. I am, I am, I am abounding in pure love for God's great name. I am, I am, I am complete by thy pattern of perfection so fair. I am, I am, I am God's radiant flame of love gently falling through the air. Fall on us, fall on us, fall on us. Blaze to us, blaze to us, blaze to us. Saturate us, saturate us, saturate us. Mercy's flame enfold us, mercy's flame enfold us, mercy's flame enfold us, mercy's flame hold us, mercy's flame hold us, mercy's flame hold us, mercy's flame set us free, mercy's flame set us free, mercy's flame set us free. I am, I am, I am surrounded by a pillar of mercy's flame. I am, I am, I am abounding in your love for God's great name. I am, I am, I am complete by thy pattern of perfection so fair. I am, I am, I am God's radiant flame of love gently falling through the air. Fall on us, fall on us, fall on us. Blaze to us, blaze to us, blaze to us. Saturate us, saturate us, saturate us. Purple flame enfold us, purple flame enfold us, purple flame enfold us, purple flame hold us, purple flame hold us, purple flame hold us, purple flame set us free, purple flame set us free, purple flame set us free. I am, I am, I am surrounded by a pillar of purple flame. I am, I am, I am abounding in your love for God's great name. I am, I am, I am complete by thy pattern of perfection so fair. I am, I am, I am God's radiant flame of love gently falling through the air. Fall on us, fall on us, fall on us. Blaze to us, blaze to us, blaze to us. Saturate us, saturate us, saturate us. This is a closing that we give after a decree. We're going to give this together with an audio clip. And in full faith, I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest 
and in full faith I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. And in full faith I consciously accept this manifest, manifest, manifest. Right here and now with full power, eternally sustained, all powerfully active, ever expanding and world unfolding until all are holy, send it in the light and free. Beloved I am, beloved I am, beloved I am. In our next slide, we're going to have an eight minute meditation led by Elizabeth Clare Prophet for our healing, where she makes calls and prayers to the heavenly hosts on our behalf. I would like to make a series of calls for you now in a meditation so that you can have a prayer from my heart that is general and specific for the healing invocations I will make for you personally. If you uncross your legs, sit erect in your chair. Be conscious now of the fact that your spine is not merely a spine, it is the altar of God in which there can blossom God's consciousness. Please close your eyes and meditate in your heart. Retain the vision of your I Am Presence and Christ Self, releasing the sacred fire now for your healing, for your wholeness, for your cleansing, for your preparation for the greater light to come. Mm -hmm. Beloved, mighty I am presence, mother of all life, son of God and Holy Spirit, come now into my temple, purify and transmute all misuse of the sacred fire in the base chakra of the mother. Intensify the violet flame, O God, by thy sacred breath, intensify now. Let the light of the Mother restore divine wholeness within my four lower bodies. Let the light of the Mother rise within me according to the direction and the God control of my own Christ Self. Blaze forth and rise now, Mother Light. Rise for the quickening of the seat of the soul chakra. Rise now for the mighty quickening. Violet flame within the heart of hearts of my own soul. Intensify and liberate me in the octaves of perfection. O Holy One of God, Lord Christ, stoop now to gather my soul unto the secret chamber of my heart. Divine Mother, enfold me in your swaddling garment sacred fire rise within me by the power of the sacred fire breath. Oh, seal now my soul in the sun of light. Seal my solar plexus in God desire. Purify now my body of emotions. Purify fears and doubts and tremblings and burdens in that solar plexus. O oh, Helios and Vesta, seal each one now and in this hour of divine perfection. Lo, I am assimilating thy light, O oh God. O oh Christ of me, come into my chakras. Let the divine consciousness of my causal body appear. Flaming presence of purple and gold, violet flame and white fire, rising mother light, trinity of manifestation. Ida Kingala and Sushumna, now be filled with the light of the Divine Mother. Purge and purify the body, the central nervous system, the arteries and veins. By sacred fire, heal me, O God. Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. Come into my heart, O threefold flame, expand. 
love, wisdom, and power be balanced now in the sun of suns. Fiery flame of living love intensify where I am. I visualize now by the power of the all-seeing eye within me the rising of the mighty flow of the kundalini fire. O oh, sacred light, quicken and awaken me. Let thy consciousness come into my temple now. Rise upon the altar of being. Quicken in me now, O oh God, thy perfect peace. Mighty law of the crown, let the divine magnet on the crown of my head now be the drawing power of the mother flame within me. Power of the spoken word, Elohim of God come forth, violet flame from the heart of the central sun, flow now through the creative word. Lord God Almighty Elohim, within my world I hear thee say, let there be light, and there is light, and I am whole, I am free. I am whole to espouse life, to consume by thy sacred fire all death and momentums of death within me. All-seeing eye of God, restore in me the vision of my origin, thy divine image. Lo, I am made in the image and likeness of Elohim. I affirm now where I am that I am. God in me is the divine image, appearing in every cell and atom of my four lower bodies. Lo, I am that I am in the central sun of every cell, radiating light and wholeness now. O universal mind of God, I claim thee as my own. Lo, I am letting that mind manifest within me now, which was in Christ Jesus and Gautama Buddha, Mother Mary and Kuan Yin, the White Goddess, Lord Lanto and Moses, Archangel Gabriel, Archangel Michael, hear my call and answer now. Lo, in my heart of hearts, O oh God, I affirm thy name, I am that I am. In conclusion, we'd like to invite you, if these teachings resonate with you, we'd like to invite you to join us to in a very informal study group on Saturdays at 4 p.m. UK time, 10 a.m. U.S. Central time. For an hour and 15 minutes, we practice the science of the spoken word and we discuss many of the vast teachings from the Ascended Masters. One of the things that we will be discussing is the healing thought form, which is another tool the Masters have given us for our healing.